All right, hey, it is supper time at my house, and we are having halushki. Now, the recipe, when I found it, I was looking through one of my cookbooks, and anything cabbage, I'm all about it. <laughs> it says creamy cabbage and noodles. And I'm like, you know what? I believe that's something my son's ex-girlfriend had told us about. So I looked, and sure enough, halushki. Well, is it authentic? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I have told y'all before that I don't really care if something's authentic, if it tastes good, what difference does it make? <laughs> it, it is like, um, it, it's a name brand, I don't care. So, if it's not authentic and I like it, I'll make it again. And I'll call it whatever I call it. I'm calling this one Halushki until I know better. So, I sat in there a while ago, let me know I know somebody will tell me if it is or not when you see it I also said when I do my little intro here I'll tell you if I liked it or not mm, I did it was really good just very homey and comforting just a nice comfort food I'll make it again I'll put it I'll put it in my uh, repertoire <laughs> now his girlfriend they had moved the next town over and he was working and she was going to college to one of the um, colleges over in Charlotte and they broke up and she was just getting in to her semester and she was within maybe a week if that of her drop-in period where she could drop it and not be penalized and have to pay she just missed it she was not one of these that could afford to just, I'm seeing stuff, can afford to just, you know, blow away college money. So, I have two rooms, right? Three bedrooms. Two rooms. One was basically David's, the computer, his um, rock posters, you know, his favorite bands. I got it fixed up for him. I bought him posters. We, we were like reliving our teenage years because look we're grown we're adults we can do what we want to do the other room was my room he built me nice shelves in the closet it's just like a small square walk in nice shelves that's where i've got all my extra stuff and my serving dishes oh i love it i wish i had a big one for all my kitchen but i'm thankful for that one and then that room was my room and i got it just like I wanted in like hippie style tie dye and just to me it's very cool you know I don't even know if, if it was a month I'd be surprised I had my TV back there so I could lay back there I had a um, leg pump for my lymphedema and I could leave it on the bed, which I did, left it on the bed, and then I could just go back there every night and do it and, you know, watch my TV. I'm telling you, if it was a month, the phone rings. Hey, Mama. She calls me Mama. Still does. Hey, Mama. <laughs> me and RJ broke up. I don't have anywhere to go. Pack your stuff and come on. So... For the next several months, she lived here, and it wasn't awkward at all because she lived here for, I can't remember how long she had lived here before they got their own place. Maybe a year? I don't know. Um, it was her and RJ and Holly and her boyfriend, and then my brother at one point, all living here. So, there was no... box truck there, there was no question of giving the child something to live and I mean it worked uh, we made it work and she finished out her semester at college and then she went on back home and then about three years ago she got married and me and David and Holly went up to Pennsylvania to her wedding and like I said she still calls me mama I'm you know, met her husband. He's a good, good man. Treats her good, and it just works out sometimes. 
just because you're with somebody don't mean that's who you're supposed to be with. RJ's in a relationship now. She's married now. And so what they had was that season. So that season came to an end and they moved on to their next season. Sometimes your seasons last longer than others. Hopefully the ones they're in now is the ones that they're, they're going to ride on out on. The, the sunset's coming and that's the one they're going to be in. Because, yes, things do happen for a season, but sometimes you're just ready for it to settle down. Well, that's all I'm going to talk about today. God, there was my mailman. Okay, now I am just distraught. I have had, living here, two of the utterly best mailmen on the planet. The first one retired. He, he knew I couldn't get around. He never, if there was something that he could bring to me, he would bring it up here. He wouldn't make me go to the mailbox because he knew I couldn't get there. I have to drive to the mailbox. Well, about the first of the year, I guess, right before this COVID mess hit, my mail started coming later and later and then I would see like because he drives a mail truck and then I would see various other vehicles and they were not him every time it rains my mailbox lid gets left open and my mail gets wet stuff that has been put in that mailbox that you need the jaws of life to get out I'm telling you there was one day I was out at that mailbox literally thought I was going to have to come in here and like get screwdrivers and poke it into the box and pull it out and I finally got it out days we don't even get mail the the mail service now is the worst I have ever had it living in this house well this man took over when the other man quit and he's just as good he babied me too both of them just babied me to death he wouldn't even make me when I had stuff I had to sign for he wouldn't even make me go to the post office he'd walk up here and wait till I got to the door he, he knew it would take me a while he, if I'm sitting on the porch, he would come and bring my mail. He'd see me sitting on the porch. He would stop his little truck and walk my mail up here to me. Good. Then all of a sudden, all this starts happening. I'm like, where, where did my mailman go? He must have retired. Well, I think I told you the other day, they have divided this route where my mailman used to come up the side road and do us and then over there too. Now, ours does this one and the mail truck does that one. And as long as it has been here, I have not been able to see who's in that truck. I have not been able to tell it. I happen to be out here right now. Okay. That ain't my mail, man. <laughs> That's somebody else that looks like my mail. <laughs> I give y'all that whole spit. It's still the truth. Anyway. <laughs> I was having a stroke over <laughs> not even my mailman. Anyway, they switched it from him doing all of it to the mail truck coming up the road and going that way. And then ours, I don't know where they come from, that way from somewhere and then over here to this. So that mail truck is the one that always goes that way. And I guess our regular person is, well, I guess they are off today because this is late. Our mail usually comes a lot earlier. But anyway, I did have the best mailman, even if that's not him. I guess he did retire. <laughs> oh Lord, help us all. <sighs> yeah, I'm getting some mail. I got that informed delivery, so I know what I'm getting. And one of them is a medical bill. I done seen it. So. Listen, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you this too. I don't normally try to talk when I'm doing a, a cooking video, but it is really easy. Um, I'm very, very close to meeting my out-of-pocket. And I knew when I had the MRI, that was going to put me over. And then a lot of it would be covered. And then I could start you know, doing everything I want to do because then I don't have to pay for the rest of the year. Well, I got an email that one of my EOBs was ready, so I went on there and looked. And when I did, I saw another one. They're not sending me emails for everyone up for some reason. When I look, I hope y'all can hear me over that lawnmower. Anyway, that's 
a big old round lawnmower for no more yard that he's got. But you know what? If he can afford that big old fancy house, that lawnmower ain't nothing but a penny in his pocket. Anyway, uh, I saw a claim for three some thousand dollars denied. I say denied? Oh, let me pull this up and see if I'm wrong. The dick doctor gave me the orders for the MRI and the x-rays and said I could get it down here and not have to travel. Went down here at our local place, give them the paper, got them done. Y'all remember? Well, because Duke didn't call and pre-authorize it, they didn't pay it. Never as long as I've had this insurance, my eyeballs are going crazy. Since I've had this insurance, did I ever ever been told I need a pre-authorization for anything. I guess maybe because if I'm referred, I don't really know what goes on behind the scenes. They just tell me and then you go and then they have already done it. So I guess that's what happened. So I called insurance and I'm like, but the doctor told me to go. I didn't just go off the street and say, hey, give you an MRI. He said he could do like, do a retro um, authorization but I get penalized 50% so the part that my insurance would pay instead of paying all of it they're only gonna pay 50% he says sometimes when that happens he said um, the places will write off the rest he said but that's just up to them so I'm waiting to get that bill my poor husband listen my eyeballs I got rocks in my eyeballs so one time in the mountains, speaking of rocks in the eyeball, I really did have rocks in my eyeballs. At the mountains at my mom and papa's house, there was two little boys next door and you couldn't have told me I wasn't a boy too. And we were out there playing. We rode the mini bikes. I, I've told y'all before we played down in the creek with the crawdaddies, the whole nine best times of my life. Well, we were out there playing and it's on the dirt road up the mountain. And Jim, it was Steve and Jim. Well, Jim, redheaded as redheaded could be. The only redheaded in the family. Anyway, <laughs> Woo. Uh, we were out there playing. He got mad about something. I, it, we argued all the time like we was brothers and sisters. He was younger than me, and Steve was older than me. I was like in between. He got a handful of that gravel and come straight up to me and walked it straight into my eyeball. I mean, on purpose. It wasn't like, oh, let's throw some rocks and your eye got in the way. No. Boom. I went running the house. Can I tell you something that hurt? Oh, my gosh. Mama come up there and she had me lay on the couch and held my eyeball open and just poured water across my eyeball to wash all that out. That was miserable. So, that's all I'm going to tell you today. <laughs> now that I <laughs> look like a moron talking about my mailman, <laughs> I'm still distraught that he's not my mailman anymore. That part is true. <laughs> okay. Go look at my supper because it's good. Did I tell you it's good? I said I was going to tell you. It's good. I really like it. Yeah, I did tell you because I'm going to make it again. So, uh, that is awesome. <laughs> That is all for today. I'll see you later. <laughs> First thing we want to do is preheat our pot. This is an enamel coated cast iron Dutch oven. Four, five, I think it's four quarts. We want three tablespoons of light butter. I use country crock. And I think I've said it before. This is most likely my last container of it because cannot find it in the stores anymore. We're going to melt that. Now I'm cutting this recipe in half because it was huge. <laughs> I've got that just a minute. Try not to burn it. Okay, to that we're going to add I've already cut part of it, but I run out of room. This is like the other part, so it's a it's a small cabbage. If it was bigger, I would only do half. 
but this is going to cook down so I'm using the whole thing and I also have one small onion chop and you can see how I chop the um, cabbage okay I am dropping the onions left and right now let me stir that up and then we'll chop the rest of this now while I'm chopping let me just tell you I don't have a clue if this is what it's supposed to be like or not because I ain't never had it but I like cabbage and I like noodles so <laughs> and I like other Polish foods so I'm going to take that off that little dirty or mark I should say and so but well, I'm going to give this a try. Now, I have heard of it. I've never made it. I have heard of it. It's called Hard Day's Extra Honey. It's from Pennsylvania. And she's Polish. And so she lives with us for a good while. Still friends to this day. She's married. I went to a wedding. Me and David and Holly did. So, we're still. She still calls me Mama. You'd be surprised, the friends of both of my children, they call me mama, and they still do, and these are adults, they still, and I love that. Anyway, she used to talk about the Polish foods she grew up eating, Polishki was one of them, and it seemed like there was, you know, I should have looked it up so I didn't look like a... <laughs> a doofus. Seems like it's Polumpki. Is that one? Polumpki. And she is also the one who, we're going to salt and pepper this, introduced us to pierogies. Now, I've never had a homemade one, so I can only imagine how good they are. I've only had the, ooh, over. I've only had the, come from the freezer. And we really like them, so I can imagine how much I would love homemade. You know, Joan over at Joan's for the plate. Every Christmas, they make like 4,000 4, pierogies. And I remember this year, because it's like her sister, her niece, I don't know who all the ladies of the family get together. And this year, because of the quarantine, um, or maybe not. Easter, not Christmas, Easter. She had to enlist the help of her boys, so her and her husband's sons made them this year. Now we're just going to let this cook down. I like my cabbage tender, so it should be cooked, I say, to the, the doneness that you like it. And me and David, we like ours um, tender. Not already chewed, but, but halfway there. <laughs> so I'll be back whenever this gets down that way. All right, so you can see how um, well I like my cabbage done. And it, it got a little brown on the bottom and turned the cabbage a little brown, but that's um, fine by me. I don't know that it's going to hurt it because when we just eat it by itself, it looks like that. So the next thing we want to do is add one cup of just fat-free half and half. We're using that instead of cream that it calls for. So, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I completely forgot to add this flour in. So, you know what I'm going to do? Hold on. You're supposed to add in a teaspoon of flour to the milk and then stir it so it starts thickening up a little bit. Well, I'm going to use this instant flour. Wonder. I love having this on hand. Wonder makes it, and I think Pillsbury might make one. But there's no um, cooking down that you have to do, except probably now because I'm trying to do it in front of somebody. You can see I'm not putting much in there, so I'll probably just, um, well, I'll look it up. I'll probably just count it as a teaspoon. So let's just let that. 
come up to the bowl for about a minute and then I'll be back. After I turned the camera off to let this come up to the boil, I realized I had the burner way down and my stuff wasn't even hot. My cream wasn't even hot, so it ain't no wonder that instant flour didn't work. So <laughs> That's why it just kind of sit there. If you use the regular flour that you're supposed to, mix it into the milk, or the half and half, put it in here, bring it to the boil, and boil it for a minute. Now the next thing we're going to add is eight ounces of cooked noodles and this no nope, I don't want to add that first I want to add a half a cup of shredded or grated real Parmesan cheese and it's two ounces that is the last little bit I had in the freezer so I didn't have to buy any I like it when it works out like that because I didn't buy any. I didn't even put any on my shopping list to even check to see if I had any. So I would have had to substitute something else. And you know, I don't know if um, real Hulushki even has cheese in it. I don't know if it has cream in it. Somebody's going to tell me. I know. Joan will tell me. She'll know. Then I'm going to add 8 ounces of cooked. These are just wide egg noodles. And I had them sitting over this bowl of the hot water they were in. Now before I stir that in, I'm going to salt these noodles because you know they need it. I did salt my water, but I tasted one and it didn't have any flavor. So you do the salt however you want to do the salt. And I'm going to turn that burner off. Because see, this will just sit here until... David gets up, and I know it's looking awful bright, but it's that, uh, let me see, hold on, well, I can't see what I'm looking for, see, either way, it's too dark or it's too light, so, alright, we got that good and stirred in, and the final step, is to top it with some cooked and crumbled bacon and this is what I I'm using just the fully cooked bacon I got this at Sam's this is five pieces because if you put in six pieces in the recipe builder it takes it up one whole point for the recipe and I don't know how many servings we're gonna get but we're gonna fix the way it and see and I've got it written down it is 161.05 ounces is the empty pot. We're going to weigh the full pot. Let me put that in there. And then we will see what we want for our serving. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm getting an error. It must be too... Oh no, <laughs> I think it weighs too much. Yeah, we're getting an error. I guess the added, so I don't know how high this goes, but that doesn't do us any good right there. So I'm going to have to back up and punt and try to scoop this out because I'm not going to scoop it out and weigh it, which I, you know, I really could. Let me put you on hold and get a dish. Uh, Weighed my Pampered Chef um, dish empty for 69.10. Full was 115.40 for a food weight of 46.3. Then I asked, you know, who, how much would six servings be? 7.7 .7 ounces. So let's see what that's going to look like. It looks, that's six. It just does not look like enough for eight, uh, eight servings. It just doesn't. And I'm counting this as both my sides for supper because it's noodles and cabbage, so I don't need anything else. I'm making Jones Honey Crunch Chicken because last week I was having trouble getting a menu. So I give David her web address. There we go, 7.75. Works for me. 
Look at that. That's not too bad. And I think I'll have I'll have it on the screen because I'll tell you wrong. I looked at it so many times. But I gave David her website. I said, go on, look up on there and find some things you want to eat. <laughs> I said, because I'm having trouble. And you know you can trust her website. So he went on there and one of the things he printed off was he came here with a stack of things he had printed. He printed off her air fried honey crunch chicken. So that's what we're having tonight with this and that's going to be our supper so i hope you enjoyed it and if you do know what halushki is let me know in the comments if this is even close you know what i did want to taste it and see if it's good i'll go off and taste it and then i'll let you know at the beginning so now that you're hearing this you already